Hi, I'm Jeff, and welcome to another one of my videos where I take a look at all the new comic books coming out on either March 1st or 2nd, 2022. And I ask myself the question, what one new comic book would I buy this week if I could buy just one book? Now, I really want to make these videos as short as possible, so let's not delay and jump right in. First, by taking a look back to my pick from two weeks ago, which was... Not a book, it was a person, it was a writer, it was Donny Cates. Donny Cates was my just one writer pick for the week. I picked him because of his association with uh, Venom, which came out two weeks ago. Uh, this is Venom issue number five. Uh, this is the last issue of Venom I'm going to be picking up. Not that it's bad, it's just not doing anything for me. And uh, the new symbiote Bedlam that's in here, nobody cares about. So, um, and I am one of those people. So I am actually going to be removing Venom from my pull list. Two books, however, that I will not be removing from my pull list that are still written by Donny Cates are Hulk and Thor. Thor issue number 22 and Hulk issue number four came out two weeks ago. And uh, they were both fantastic. Fantastic. I like Donny Cates a lot. He is the, I'm going to say this, I don't like Michael Bay as a director, generally speaking, but his movies are fun and exciting. So I will say that Donny Cates is like the Michael Bay of comic book writers because his books are really fun and really exciting and give me these great moments that I really enjoy getting from him in his comic books, okay? So uh, I haven't, I've been talking about these two titles for as long as they've been out in these videos. So if you're not already on board, nothing I say is going to get you on board, but I still, still recommend you check out these titles if you haven't already, especially this one. And uh, I've got my eye on issue number six specifically. We'll talk about that more in a later video. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the books that are coming out this week. Now there are the first I'm going to tell you about the books that I am going to be pulling this week that I'm not going to be talking about in my honorable mentions or my pick. I'm going to be pulling Batman issue 121 and I was 98% sure I was going to stop pulling Batman after this issue 121. But then news came out this week that starting with issue 125, Batman is going to be written by Chip Zdarsky. That is amazing news. I am absolutely a fan of Chip Zdarsky. So just when I was ready to drop Batman, they pulled me back in with the news that Chip Zdarsky will be writing it, starting with issue number 125. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, they've got me on the hook for a little while longer. Uh, I'll give uh, Chip Zdarsky probably the same five issues that I would give most anybody. Uh, but I have a feeling that I'll be pulling Batman from Chip Zdarsky well past those initial five issues. Speaking of Chip Zdarsky, this week I'm also pulling New Burn, issue number four. Uh, I'm a fan of Chip Zdarsky, and I'm a fan of the storytelling in New Burn, so it's a pull of mine. Uh, I'm also pulling Crossover, issue number 12. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'm a fan of Donny Cates, and I am still enjoying Crossover, so I'm pulling that. And then I'm also pulling Star Wars, issue number 21. I've been enjoying the Star Wars tale. I've been with it since the very beginning. Um, it's been very good, and we have more to talk about in the world of Star Wars later in this video. But let's go ahead and move forward and talk about the five honorable, five honorable mentions that I have, and then we'll get into my just one book pick for the week. My first honorable mention is a new book. Uh, it is called Batman Killing Time, issue number one of six from DC. Here's the description. Three villains, one dark knight, and a deadly heist gone wrong. Catwoman, the Riddler, and the Penguin join forces to pull off the greatest robbery in the history of Gotham City and their prize? A mysterious and priceless artifact in the secret possession of Bruce Wayne. 
But as the events unfold, what fun is a heist without a bloody double cross or two? The blockbuster team of Tom King and David Marquez bring an epic, white-knuckled, action-packed tale of a young Batman desperate to recover his most prized possession from a host of violent rogues before the clock strikes the killing time. Okay, so um, at first I was like, yeah, I don't really need another standalone Batman title in my life. There are already way too many Batman stories out in the world. I don't need another standalone one. But the reason why I mentioned this book to you this week is Tom King. Tom King is a good writer, uh, dare I say great writer, uh, and somebody that when they write something you should pay attention. So if you're a Batman fan, uh, I highly recommend this book this week uh, because Tom King is likely to deliver from a story perspective. The next book I want to mention to you is What If Miles Morales Became Captain America? Issue number one from Marvel Comics. Here's the description. Friendly neighborhood Captain America? What if Miles Morales had never been bitten by a genetically enhanced spider and, beca and became Spider-Man? What if instead the U.S. government recruited, trained, and granted him incredible powers with the super soldier serum? What makes Miles a hero no matter the circumstances, uh, no matter the reality? And are there other superheroes the many Mileses of the universe might have become instead of Spidey? Okay, so I mentioned this book because for several reasons. One, I'm a big What If fan. I mentioned before when I was talking about Chip Zdarsky's What If series, um, Spider's Shadow, if I remember correctly. Um, what if books were some of the first comic books that I ever bought as a kid and I really really like them because they can do anything with what they want that they want to with these characters generally speaking with a character in a comic book series um, writers are allowed to like they're like little toys that you can take off the shelf and you have to play you can play with but when you're done with them you have to put them back on the shelf exactly as they were um, most of the time uh, it's rather restrictive from a storytelling standpoint. What is fun for me with the what if stories is that you can take that toy, you can play with it, and you can break it in half and smash it and then turn it into whatever you want to uh, because it's a standalone story that's out of continuity. So I really, really enjoy what if stories for that. In addition, um, it's Miles Morales. Miles Morales is one of the hottest modern comic book characters, if not the hottest modern comic book character. So you can't, you know, just, uh, he's fun and he's entertaining. So I think he's a good character. Um, now, some of my reservation with this is that Mo Miles Morales is a little bit, I don't want to say overrated. That's not the, I guess I'm a little burnt out on Miles Morales. You know, I guess all the spec that I hear about his first appearance and it's just constantly out there. He's a great character and he's definitely going to be around for the long haul. I, I'm, a, I'm a little burnt out on him. So as much as I love what if stories, this is not one that I'm going to be picking up. Him as Captain America doesn't really grab me. I kind of like what if stories that take big swings and this just kind of feels like a bunt <laughs> a little bit. But I bet you it gets the batter on base. Hey, how'd that bat baseball metaphor go? <laughs> um, but it might be something that if you're a big fan of Miles Morales, of Ca Captain America, or of what if stories, uh, you might consider checking it out this week. Next, I wanna mention to you a new book called Strange, issue number one from Marvel Comics. Here's the description. A new Sorcerer Supreme rises. Doctor Strange is dead, and a new Sorcerer Supreme has taken the title, or should we say, Sorceress. Haunted by her recently returned memories, Clea longs to bring Stephen Strange back from the dead. But when a mysterious group attacks the magical realm, Clea must rise to the duties of Sorcerer Supreme for she is now the sole protector of Earth against magical threats. Don't miss the twists and turns as Jed McKay continues the story from the death of Doctor Strange with artist Marcelo 
Ferraria. Okay, so um, first off, uh, this book has some really cool covers. Uh, so if you're just interested in cover buys this week, uh, there's some really great covers coming out for this title uh, this week. When I first read that this was happening, that there was a now a sorceress supreme, I got really, really excited. And I was like, oh man, am I going to jump all over this book? Who is this character? I didn't know anything about this character. Well, this character has been around a long time and I'm just ignorant. Um, this character has been, I think, was a an ex-wife or ex-girlfriend of Stephen Strange. Uh, and she's, once again, been around a long time. So uh, this is not a first appearance. This is not going to blow up... Um, on spec, uh, I don't even. I think that she has. I don't think she's ever been the Sorcerer Supreme, though. Uh, let me know down in the comments um, if this is her first appearance as the Sorcerer Supreme. If it is, then there might be some value there down the line because you know um, Benedict Cumberbatch. He's not going to be playing uh, Doctor Strange forever. And these characters will have to evolve in some way. And possibly um, Clea being the Sorcerer Supreme might be a way for this character to evolve. I also believe that there are rumors, I don't know if they're confirmed or not, that, um, uh, boy, I'm blanking on her name. Um, Charlize Theron will be playing Clea uh, in the upcoming um, Doctor Strange movie. So they may be laying the groundwork for that. So there may be a future for this character in the MCU that could make this book have some spec potential. So it's worth having on your radar. If you're a fan of Doctor Strange, if you just want to pick it up for spec, if you want to just pick it up to give it a try and get in on the ground floor of something new, uh, those are all reasons you might consider picking up this book this week. Okay, the next honorable mention I have is a new book. It's called Radio Spaceman, issue number one of a two-issue limited series from Dark Horse Comics. Here's the description. When a ship crashes and lands on a mysterious planet and some of the surviving crew go missing, the mysterious mechanical hero Radio Spaceman is called to investigate. But the planet hides much more than the missing crew, and Radio Spaceman may be stumbling into more than even he can handle. Based on Mike Mignola's pencil, uh, viral pencil sketches, Radio Spaceman is a steampunk space adventure full of mystery monsters and awesome gadgets, featuring the amazing art of Greg Hinkle and colors by longtime... Uh, Mignolaverse collaborator Dave Stewart. Uh, this new series is perfect for Mignol Mignola fans, old and new. Okay, so the first reason to pick up this book is what that last line just said. It's uh, it's a perfect for Mignola fans, old and new. So if you're a fan of Mike Mignola, and you know, why wouldn't you be? Uh, this might be a book worth picking up. It also appears to be the first appearance of this character, Radio Spaceman. Um, and he's a mysterious mechanical hero in space. Uh, these are all things that, I mean, you can see as I'm talking about it, I'm smiling. This sounds like fun. This sounds like it could be pretty entertaining. And it's going to be, so it's going to be his first appearance. Um, who knows? Who knows if this character might have a, a future down the line? Uh, you know, it's a two-issue limited series. It's a very low commitment. So you can just pick up the first one. It's a $4 book. The second one's probably going to be a $4 book. You pick them both up. You have a full story. You have a full first appearance. Um, and who knows what could happen down the line. And it's probably going to be pretty fun and entertaining. In fact, I hadn't been planning on picking up this book this week. But as I'm talking to you about it right now, I'm getting myself more and more excited about it. So I am thinking that I am going to be adding this to my poll. So I'm glad I had it in my honorable mentions. The next book I want to mention to you is... Star Wars High Republic, issue number 15 from Marvel Comics. Here is the description. Everything changes. Phase one of Star Wars The High Republic reaches its galaxy-shaking conclusion. Only one person can save the Jedi from the mysterious monsters that stalk Starlight Beacon. Who will live and who 
will die. Okay, so as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, or toward the beginning of this video, there was more Star Wars talk today, and this is what I was referring to. Star Wars The High Republic issue number 15. Now this is going to be the last issue of this series. Uh, it's my understanding that later this year, uh, there will be another uh, High Republic series that comes out, a new one, but it's one that takes place in a slightly different time period, something like 150 years before this current High Republic um, time frame that we're in, this, time, this current uh, series that we're in. So considering the fact that it is a last issue of the series, sometimes they drop little things into final issues that are worth paying attention to. Um, and sometimes they don't. I actually picked up, uh, I didn't pick it up, I, I went to the comic book shop and I flipped through um, issue number 13 of the High Republic Adventures from IDW just this past week to see if there was anything worthwhile uh, in there because that was the last issue of High Republic Adventures and I flipped through it and I was like, nope, 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 there's nothing. So sometimes there's nothing, sometimes it's just the end. This one seems like it's going to have something and in fact it's a little bit confirmed already by Key Collector Comics. This is supposed to be the first full appearance of the Leveler, also known as the Great Leveler. Now, the Leveler or the Great Leveler is essentially a creature that can sever a Force user's connection to the Force, basically taking away their superpowers. Um, the creature is kind of menacing looking. I, I saw an image of it. It's a pretty awesome in its grotesqueness. Um, and it, it, I also understand that it can turn the Force users to stone as well. I'm a little bit more shady on that detail, but it can connect, disconnect them, excuse me, from their um, ability to connect with the, with the Force. Uh, that's interesting. This character in this High Republic series, I guess, was trapped in ice and was liberated of sorts from the ice uh, for its use in this storyline. So the question is, how long was that creature trapped in ice? I don't know, maybe 150 years, maybe? I don't know. It's very possible that we're going to be seeing more of this creature or these creatures, um, potentially, uh, in the new High Republic series that will be coming out later this year. And it's basically kind of a foregone conclusion at this point that the future of Star Wars and Star Wars narratives is likely to come from this High Republic era. There's a huge push from, from Disney to tell these High Republic stories. So I have to imagine that we're going to see a lot more um, in television shows on Disney Plus and in the movie theaters from this era. Era. So this is a book that is likely uh, worth checking out. Uh, I'm absolutely going to be picking up this book myself. I kind of like that the A cover is kind of a, it's an homage to the first issue of uh, this title, which is kind of fun for me. Uh, but in addition, I think that the spec is there. Um, and it's worth picking up. In fact, you might consider picking up two or three of these uh, if you're able to. And I'll also finish off talking about this by saying, if you don't like my just one book pick for this week, this would be my backup pick for you. Uh, this would be the one that I would steer you to if you're like, ah, come on, Jeff, that's a dumb pick when you hear my pick in just a moment. I would steer you back and make this my alternate uh, just one book pick for this week. That being said, let's go ahead and move on to my just one book pick for this week. Okay, my just one book pick for this week is The Nice House on the Lake, issue number seven of 12 uh, from DC Black Label. Here's the description. One of the most critically acclaimed and best-selling horror titles of 2021 returns for its shocking second act, and now is the perfect time to enter the house. The 10 hardy survivors 
gathered in the house by their mutual friend Walter, thought they'd finally cracked the code on his plans. And now everything they thought they knew has literally changed. Can they free themselves from their patterns? Or are they all just determined to build a prison of their very own? Grab the first collected volume and get caught up on the most surprising series in comics. Okay, so with these videos, my picks are always personal. They're my picks. What book would I buy if I could buy just one book? And for me, this week, it's The Nice House on the Lake. I have really, really been blown away by this title. Um, as you all know, I'm a gigantic fan of James Tynan IV, and he doesn't never fails to deliver. But I, I've said this before, I always pick up his titles with kind of like a grain of salt. I'm like, okay, I, I'm not gonna love this just because I'm a fan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna judge it on its own merits. And if I like it, great. And if I don't, fine. Man, do I like The Nice House on the Lake. It is really good. Some people complain that it's too slow. I love the pace of it. I love that it's slow. These people are trapped in this house with no place to go, living kind of a routine uh, existence, you know? Um, that pace of the storytelling, I think, is a nice reflection of the pace of life that these characters must be experiencing for themselves. But even with the pace being slow, there's always new little tidbits of the mystery, new information that gets revealed. And every time I get new information, I just want to get more. And I'm just so excited about this title. I enjoy it so much. It's, it's, it's a mystery of sorts that I really want to solve kind of. I also just kind of enjoyed the mystery and the questions and the what the heck is going on here and then where is it going because it promises to go to a very dark place, uh, even darker than it's already at. So I, I just really, really enjoy this story. And if you're saying to me, hey Jeff, it's issue number seven. I've heard you talk about this book. It's way too far along. I am not gonna go back and pick up issues number one through six. It's too much work, especially with issue number one, generally speaking, being about a 20, 25 dollar book. Well, guess what? <laughs> this week, as is mentioned in the description, the trade paperback for issues number one through six comes, comes out. So this is a fantastic time. You can pick up the trade, uh, and then you can pick up issue number seven as well, and you're completely caught up. And I can't, can't recommend it enough. It's really, really good. It's far from typical um, comic book reading, but it is just great storytelling. And that is why The Nice House on the Lake issue number seven is my just one book pick for this week. All right, I hope you enjoy the books that I've mentioned this week. Let me know your thoughts about them or any other books that are coming out this week down in the comments. If you like these videos, likes are appreciated by me. There's been a lot more views of these videos recently, and I thank all of you that are taking the time to watch these videos each week. If you haven't already subscribed, I invite you to subscribe. I put out um, some test your comic book grading skills videos this past week. I have a, another of a 98 pre-screen video that's going to be coming out later this week. So uh, there's more content coming out that I think you might be interested in checking out. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.